Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This tutorial will be on Proposition 2 of Book 7. And in this proposition, we are given the methods, a method, used to find the greatest common divisor between two numbers. It is very similar to what we did in Proposition 1. What we're going to do is continuously subtract the smaller number from the larger number until we can no longer do so, switch roles, do it again, repeat, until we end up where one number is measured by the other. And if this is true, then the smaller number will be the greatest common divisor. And the best way to show this is with an example. So we start with AB is equal to 140 and CD is equal to 63. And we start subtracting the smaller from the larger, so 140 minus 63, 77 minus 63, and we end up with a smaller number 14. Now we take 63 minus 14 and again and again until we are left with 7, which is smaller than 14. Now at this stage, if you know that 7 measures 14, then you know that you have reached the end point and that 7 is the greatest common divisor. However, let's assume that you don't. How do you know if you've reached the end? Well, you start with the smaller number again and you continually subtract until you end with no remainder. And if that's the case, then you know that 7 measures 14 or that CF measures AE and that the greatest common divisor is 7, or CF. So now we need to prove that this is true. So we're starting off with one situation where AB, or excuse me, where CD measures AB. Now if CD measures AB, there can't be a number larger than CD that also measures CD. So in that case, this has to be the greatest common divisor because there can be no number larger than CD that also measures CD. So this is a very simple situation and the proof is relatively straightforward. So now let's look at the situation where CD does not measure AB. So we end up with a situation where BE is measured by CD and df is measured by ae, and ae is measured by cf. And again, this proof is, or proposition, is stating that cf would then be the greatest common divisor. So before we go forward, we first need to prove that cf is indeed a common measure. So let's look, we have ae is measured by cf. Now, df is measured by AE. So df is equal to AE plus AE plus AE, and so on and so forth, which basically comes to that CF measures DF. So let's look at this um, again, because I'm going to be using it over and over again, and I don't want to have to always repeat myself. So CF measures AE and AE measures DF. Therefore, CF measures DF. It should be noted that nowhere in at least the book that I'm using did Euclid link this to any previous proposition, nor did he prove it. He used almost the word obviously. So we're going to go with that. So let's Repeat this again. CF measures AE, AE measures DF, so therefore CF measures DF. Now CD is equal to CF plus DF. Now CF measures DF, and we're adding another CF, so therefore CF also measures CD. Now let's look at BE. CD measures BE. CF measures CD. 
So CF must also measure BE. So we now have that CE measures BE. CF measures BE, CF measures AE. So CF measures both of these. If we add them together, we get AB. So therefore, we now have that CF also measures AB. So with this as our starting condition, we have shown that CF measures CD and CF also measures AB. So thus we have shown that CF is a common measure of AB and CD. So I'm just writing this here, but we still need to prove that C CD is the greatest common divisor or the greatest common measure. So let's assume we're going to prove this by um, contradiction. So let's assume that there is another number larger than CF that will also measure AB and CD. Now, CD is measured by G. That's our assumption. So CD is measured by D. And BE is measured by CD. So we have that G measures BE. We also have that G measures AB. And AE is equal to AB minus BE. So both of these are measured by G, so the result will also be measured by G. DF is measured by AE, AE is measured by G, so therefore G measures DF. So G measures DF. Now, G measures CD, and G measures DF, and CF is CD minus DF, so we have that CD is measured by G, we subtract something that is measured by G, and we end up with something that is measured by G. So now G measures CF. Now G is greater than CF, and yet CF is measured by G, and this is an impossible situation. So therefore, we have proved that there is no G greater than CF that measures AB and CD. So since there is no G greater than CF that measures AB and CD, we have shown that CF is the greatest common divisor. This proposition also comes with a porism. If we have a number, and let's assume this g greater than cf doesn't work because we know that introduces a contradiction. So if we take out that g is greater than cf, so it can be less than cf, just cannot be greater. If we have a number g that measures two numbers, a, b, and c, d, then it also measures the greatest common divisor. 